Hey y'all. So today we're going to start talking about metric embeddings, which is a topic that we'll spend a few classes on. The basic idea of metric embeddings is you've got some set with some notion of distance on it, and you want to somehow embed this set into some other space, possibly with some other notion of distance. Metric embeddings come up a lot in dimension reduction and other algorithmic situations, so let's get started. So in order to talk about metric embeddings, we first need to define metric spaces. So a metric space is just a pair xd, where x is a set, and d is a function that maps x cross x to r, the real numbers, and we think of d as being a distance function, or a metric, which satisfies the following properties. So first, for any little x in our set big X, the distance between x and itself is zero. Pretty intuitive. Second, for any x and y that are distinct, so x is not equal to y, the distance between x and y should be equal to the distance between y and x, which should be strictly greater than zero. Finally, we have the triangle inequality, which says that for any x and y and z in x, the distance between x and y is less than or equal to the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and y. This is basically saying that it should be faster to go from x to y than to go from x to z and then from z to y. So any function d that satisfies these three properties is called a metric, and x and d together is called a metric space. So let's see some examples of metric spaces. The first example is LP. So for any p greater than or equal to 1, the LP metric space R to the K comma DP is defined as the metric space where the set is R to the K and the metric is DP where DP is defined this way. So it's the sum from I equals one to K of XI minus YI to the P all raised to the one over P. This is also written as the P norm between X and Y. For example, L1 distance here, which is sometimes called Manhattan distance, is the distance you have to walk parallel to the coordinate axes to get from one point to the other. So the distance in L1 between this point and this point is the length of this path. L2 here is just the standard Euclidean distance, so the length of this line is the distance between these two points. We can also define the L infinity distance, uh, which is defined as the maximum in any coordinate of the differences between x and y. So again, in this example, the distance between this point and this point is this distance. A second useful example is graph metrics. So suppose we have a graph G with n vertices V and with positive edge weights. Then the graph metric space on the points V, the vertices, with the distance function D sub G is given by d sub g of x and y, so the distance in the graph between x and y, is just defined to be the length of the shortest path between x and y in g. So for example, in this graph here, the distance between x and y is 1, because the length of the shortest path from x to y is 1. The distance between x and z is 4, here's the shortest path. And the distance between y and z is 5, going around this way. It's not hard to see that any finite metric space can be represented as a graph metric. If this isn't clear to you, pause the video now and convince yourself of it. So we all have our favorite metric spaces. For example, maybe we like metric spaces which are low dimensional LP spaces uh, because they're very fast algorithms in smaller dimensions. Or maybe you like L2, Euclidean space. For many of us, it's more natural to visualize things in L2. So given that we like some metric spaces more than others, at least for certain applications, a natural question is whether we can view one metric space as part of another. That is, given some nasty, hard to work with metric space, can we somehow embed that into your favorite metric space? When we can do this exactly is called an isometric embedding. So more formally, given two metric spaces, x with a distance dx and y with a distance dy, we see that a function f that maps x to y is an isometric embedding if, for all points x and x prime in capital X, uh, 
the distance according to Y's metric between the images f of x and f of x prime should be equal to the distance according to X's metric between X and X prime. So to see a quick example of this, suppose we have this graph metric space here. This is a very simple graph metric space where the distance between all of the points is one. We can isometrically embed this metric space into the metric space R2 with the L1 metric as follows. So the point X can just map to the origin 0, 0. The point Y is going to map to 1 half minus 1 half, and the point Z is going to map to 1 half, 1 half. And we can check that under this mapping, the distances between all the points are exactly preserved. For example, the distance in the L1 metric between f of x and f of y is 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. And that's exactly the same as the distance in our original metric between x and y. OK, so when can we do this beyond that simple example? Well, the good news is that any finite metric space can be isometrically embedded into L infinity. So here's how we can do that. So suppose we have a set X with N points. So X is X1, X2, dot, 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 up to Xn. And suppose we have some metric D on these N points. Then we're going to define an embedding F from X into Rn as follows. F is going to map the point Xi to a vector of length n, where the first coordinate is going to be the distance between x1 and xi, the second is the distance between x2 and xi, and so on up to the last coordinate, which is the distance between xn and xi. So for example, in this graph metric space that we had before, the point x1 would map to the vector 0, 1, 4, 4, 2, because the distance between x1 and itself is 0, the distance between x1 and x2 is 1, the distance between x1 and x3 is 4, the distance between x1 and x4 is also 4, and the distance between x1 and x5 is 2. So that's the embedding, and I claim that this embedding is an isometry. That is, I claim that for any i and j, the distance between xi and xj is the same as the L infinity distance between f of xi and f of xj. It's a good exercise to verify this claim. Actually, similar reasoning is going to come up later when we talk about Bourgain's embedding, so it's a good idea to pause the video and verify this now. OK, so that was the good news. We can always isometrically embed anything we want into L infinity. However, there is some bad news. And the bad news is that isometric embeddings don't always exist into any target space we like. As an example, try embedding this metric space, given by this graph here, into L2 for any dimension you like. Notice that we can't just embed it as a square as it's drawn here on the plane, since the distance between y and w should be 2. But if we were to just embed it here in this slide, the distance would be root 2. OK, so I claim you can't actually do this. And it's a good exercise to pause the video now and convince yourself, really, that this can't be done. The fact that we don't always have isometric embeddings leads us to the notion of low distortion embeddings. So that is, if we can't get an exact isometry, we might hope for an approximate one. More precisely, given two metric spaces, x with metric dx and y with metrics di, we say that a function f that maps x to y is an embedding of x into y with distortion alpha and scaling factor beta if for all x and x prime in x, the distance in y between their images, f of x and f of x prime, is reasonably close to their original distance in x. More precisely, it's sandwiched in between their original distance in x times the scaling factor beta, and that same scale distance times some additional fudge factor alpha. And this fudge factor alpha is called the distortion. So here's an example. Let's consider that same square you just convinced yourself was impossible to embed isometrically into L2. So while we can't embed it isometrically into L2, it turns out we can embed it into L2 with distortion square root of 2. More precisely, if we just embed it in the natural way, so the four points of the square go to the points plus minus 1 here, then you can check that this is an embedding with scaling factor root 2 
and distortion alpha, which is also equal to square root of 2. Okay, so those are the basic definitions that we'll need going forward to talk about metrics embeddings. To recap, low distortion embeddings embed one metric space into another with low distortion. That is, the distance between points are approximately preserved. Some desired properties of low distortion embeddings include, well, low distortion, certainly, so we don't want to mess up distances too much, and also having a useful target space. For example, maybe we want to embed into a low dimensional LP space or to a space with a metric that's easy to understand or compute with. In the next video, we'll see Bourgain's embedding, which will allow us to embed any endpoint metric space into LP with distortion big O of log n. So see you there.